Okay, this lesson is 4.1b of right triangle trigonometry. We're going to finish up objective one, and then we're going to talk about what it means to solve a right triangle. So to finish up objective one, we're going to talk about the inverse of trigonometric or inverse trigonometric functions. So when you are when you're finding the inverse, okay, that means that you're going to be looking for the angle now and not the actual ratio. And so on your calculator, that means you're going to use the second button with a trig button, unless you have that. Some of the calculators do. Class Calc already has that button. And it would look like this, sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one, or tangent to the negative. Those are the inverse tangent, inverse cosine, or inverse sine functions. And that's what you're going to use whenever you're looking for an angle. Okay, so in this first one, to find an angle, we're going to use a trig function to find the measure of theta, round to the nearest degree if necessary. Okay, angles to the nearest degree. So I have theta that I'm looking for here, and 14 is across from theta, so that means, and it's not across from the right angle, so it is the opposite side. 16 is across from the right angle, so it is the hypotenuse. Okay. So what trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? That is the sine of theta. Opposite, of course, is 14. Hypotenuse is 16. So this is the one where I'm saying I would encourage you to write this next step. And if you want to write it first, you can do that. But I'm going to write theta equals the inverse sine of 14 over 16 because that just helps me know what button I have to use on my calculator. So theta equals 61.045 to the nearest degree is going to be 61 degrees. Okay. So next, the word problems, real life problems, y'all. We deal with something called angle of depression and angle of elevation. Okay. If you're standing somewhere and looking up, it's the angle of elevation. If you're in the plane looking down, that's your angle of depression. This is what is referred to as that line of sight. But these two lines are horizontal from the position, and those lines are always parallel. So that means that the angle of depression and the angle of elevation are alternate interior angles. So they're always going to be equal to each other. So kind of a key thing you want to remember when you're solving these problems. So we have a group of hikers on a camping trip climb to the top of a 1500 foot mountain. When the hikers look down, at an angle of depression of 36 degrees. So that angle is always measured from the horizontal. So this is the angle of depression. They can see the campsite in the distance. What is the horizontal distance? So that means I'm looking for this, not that. That would be a true distance, but this is the horizontal distance between the camp campsite and the group to the nearest foot. So here is my triangle. And my angle, so if, if up here I have 36 degrees, then the alternate interior angle is going to be down here. So I know that angle there is 36 degrees, okay? And 1500 is opposite, and that means that X is adjacent. So what trig function deals with opposite and adjacent? That, of course, is the tangent function. And opposite 36 degrees is 1500, and adjacent is X, okay? My X is on the bottom, okay? So that means I'm going to switch these two. And that means that X is going to equal 1,500 divided by the tangent of 36. So I plug that in my calculator, and I get 2064.57. Rounded to the nearest foot is going to be 2,065 feet. Okay, number seven. All right, this is probably the hardest one. So if anything, you need to pay attention to this problem, okay? Because you're going to have something like this um, in your homework and on the um, quiz or test. Um, the angle of elevation from a car to the top of the apartment building is 48 degrees. That's this guy right here. All right, that's his angle of elevation. If the angle of elevation from another car that is 22 feet in front of him is 64 degrees, how tall is the building? Okay, so I'm looking for the height of the building. Okay, um, so that's what I'm going to put my main variable. Then I've got 64 degrees. So this is a triangle right here. And if that's 64, I know this angle here is 90. So that means that the angle up top is going to be 26 degrees. That's 90 minus 64. 
Okay. And if you want to go ahead and do the other triangle, so this big one, 48 degrees, then that means this whole angle here, right here, is going to be 90 minus 48, which is 42 degrees. Okay. So in solving for T, um, I'm going to set up this side. I'm going to label um, on the bottom is going to be labeled as X. So that means that I could write a ratio, the tangent of 64, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of 64 is going to be T over X. Okay. Um, can't do anything much with that right now because I have two variables. Um, and that's going to be the case with anything I try to write with that triangle. So now I got to use that bigger triangle and I'm going to do a similar um, ratio. So I'm going to have the tangent of 48 is equal to opposite. Opposite is still T, but the adjacent side, you got to keep in mind that's the adjacent side. It's not just 22. It's not just X, but it's 22 plus X. So that's what's going to be down here. So I have two equations with two variables. And if you remember back from your algebra, that's either substitution or elimination. Um, elimination is not going to work in this case, so I have to use substitution. So um, the easier variable to solve for over here doesn't really matter, but over here it's going to be easier to solve for T because we've talked about how we can just move this bottom thing out in front. So when I do and I solve it, I get 22 plus X times the tangent of 48 equals T. If I do the same thing over here and solve for T, now I have two expressions that are both equal to T. So what I'm going to do is set those expressions equal to each other. So X times the tangent of 64 equals, I'm going to distribute 22 times the tangent of 48 plus X times the tangent of 48. And now, similar to when we solve things with the, in the last chapter with logs, I've got to get everything with an X on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract X tangent of 48. So when I subtract that, that's going to be equal to 22 tangent of 48. And then again, just in our logs, like we did with our logs, I have an X in both of these terms. So I'm going to factor out that X, and that's going to give me X times the quantity of tangent of 64 minus tangent of 48 equals 22 times the tangent of 48. And now I got to get rid of this thing because I'm trying to get X by itself. And how do I get rid of it? I'm going to divide. So that means X equals 22 times the tangent of 48 divided by the tangent of 64 minus tangent of 48. Mouthful. But put it in your calculator just like that. Use that horizontal fraction bar because if you don't, you will need grouping symbols. So X equals 26.00616. All right, and I'm going to go ahead, and I've got to go find, that's X, y'all. So I'm looking for T. Remember, T is the answer to the problem. So I can either put it into either one of these two, and this one looks simpler. So I'm going to go plug X into that. So T is going to equal X times the tangent of 64, and X I'm going to put in is 26. So when I plug that in my calculator, I get 53.3112, which is going to round um, they didn't give it to me, but I'm going to go ahead and take it to the tenths place. So 53.3 feet is what we got. All right, last thing we got to talk about is solving a triangle. So whenever you solve a triangle, they happen to say solve a right triangle, but anyone, you have to find all of the sides and angles that you do not already know. So when you look at this problem and it says solve the triangle, then I'm going to look at it and go, okay, what am I missing? Well, I know angle B, but I do not know angle A and angle C and um, what else? I don't know angle A. I don't know angle C and I don't know little c. Okay, so to find angle A, um, if I'm using angle A and I'm going to use the numbers involved in the problem with angle A, then that means that 20 is opposite and 37 is across the right angle, so it is hypotenuse. It's not the adjacent. So opposite and hypotenuse deal with the sine, and the sine of A is going to equal to 20 over 37. And again, when I'm looking for the angle, that's when I'm going to use the inverse sine. So I write it like that. 
and let me see if that's enough room. So when I put that in my calculator, I get 32.7. Just like we've done before, y'all, we're going to round our um, angles to the nearest degree. So that means that A is going to be 33 degrees. And angle C is just going to be 90 minus 33, which of course is 57 degrees. And C, there are more than one ways to do it. But one of the things I want you to remember is if you know, you should always, when you're doing this, you'll always use the numbers in the problem and not necessarily one that you found if you can, because it's just going to be more accurate. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I know the hypotenuse. I do not know one of the legs. So that means that I'm going to have 20 squared plus C squared equals 37 squared. 37 squared minus 20 squared is 969. Take the square to both sides, and um, I'm going to get 31.1 as my answer. And that is all you have to solving um, right triangles, right triangle trigonometry. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us or come see us. Thank you so much, and y'all have a great day.